Yo, so I asked the official Multiverses Discord and the Multiverses Pro Discord every problem they have with all characters in Multiverses. Today, I'll be going over counters for every character in Multiverses and how to beat some of the strongest, the craziest, and the most annoying moves in the game so far from the whole roster. I ain't gonna lie, this video gonna take a lot out of your boy. So please hit the like button, subscribe, and lock in. I also did this video with third time place winner and EVO 2022 finalist for Multiverses. And let's say OBS hates me with audio this week. The show must go on. I got the knowledge. And if you guys like this video, I will do another one with more players this time and actual audio. <laughs> Again, LGI, let's get it. Let's go. All right, heavy disclaimer. The training mode in this version of Multiverses is not as crazy as other fighting games or even the previous version. So bear with your boy here, okay? Because I'm going to break stuff down on the screen and talk to you why they happen in the gameplay. All right, first up is Batman. So, number one, you see the grappling hook? That is one of the things you do. Just wait and time it and just air dodge towards it. It's easy to air dodge completely towards it to get away from it. What you want to do is air dodge towards him. Oh, battering is another thing you could get around as well with Batman. Literally air dodging it is slower now and even charged up. You could literally just dash over and a lot of characters sometimes low profile like Morty, Stripe even. Usually when you see Batman go for a down air on you, you could punish it with another move or just an up smash. Pretty simple and clean. Another thing with Batman, you see if you're above him, he's gonna try to go for, I call the bat shirt you can. <laughs> You see how you dodge the grappler hook right there? You could completely avoid it if you just air dodge away from it and just time it completely. See, and also it's maybe risky cause you're like, why would I dodge in on it? But like, for example, dodging in is better than dodging away because Batman will track you down and then go into the uppercut completely. See how if you just stand there, he can combo off of you. That's a bad thing to happen to you if a Batman gets you in those situations. See how I parried that? You can parry the up hit of it as well and combo completely into something crazy if you see Batman go for the up special. All right, R is a very tricky character. Usually a lot of the times, stand above her can be your downfall. Um, a good way to punish Arya is simply just air dodging then punishing with a forward aerial. A lot of the times you just get away from a lot of those situations and they can't hit you. <laughs> See how Arya's trying to chase me down with her up air, the CP on very hard right now. A lot of people like to, players like to do that and they get cooked for it. Another thing about Arya's knife is it's always good to just completely run away from it all together. She's gonna just keep chasing you down, run completely if you see it, run further away the opposite direction. That is the best tip I could give you right now. Cause so many people try to play around it and it end up stumping on it and it'd be so bad for them. It, it ain't gonna work out in your favor, man. See how I ran away from that knife right there? You got it, cause when you see it coming at you, just keep running all the way out. It usually doesn't catch most characters, but if unless you just got very slow walk or dash speed, you might get caught button that. I usually just wait, watch them throw it, and run completely out of the way of it. Dash attack is one of those moves that is very hard to punish right now. It's a very good tool altogether. Don't try to punish it or contest it you will get hurt in the process. Another key tip is dealing with Arya going for the up special. That's something that you just gotta get really used to. A lot of the times people like to use it at the ledge to catch them off. Depending on the direction of your DI, you could tell where you usually should avoid this move altogether. Also, another good tip with dealing with Arya's knife is completely just walking and running away from a donut contester and be ready for the dodge. Now, a big thing about that is hard to dodge, especially if you see it coming, because it's a very like disjointed and very fast looking move. So the best tip I deal with it is just wait on the Arya, see what she's gonna do and capitalize, and then just play off of her completely. Another key tip is when you see Arya's up special like this, depending on what percent you at, most Arya players literally will go for one of two options with it. Just on a basic tip, when I some pause, but essentially, if you're at low, a very high percent and they're going for a combo, they will go for a, a forward air just to knock you out. Or if they see you just not air dodging or doing anything out of it, going straight for the up up attack from it just like this can be very detrimental to your game plan of death. 
a good perk to have on Arya against the knife is sturdier dodger. You do gain armor for parrying a projectile if you really like that. All right, but Nanagar is one of the weirdest characters of all time in multiverses. Honestly, one of the strongest right now, in my opinion, to this day still. Very powerful across the board when it comes to Banana Guard. A big thing about Banana Guard is you have to just completely just play off of his movements. A lot of his moves are very predictable to deal with, but a lot of them have very huge knockbacks and hit you really far. One thing I like to deal with with his side special is running away and punishing him. It's easy when you see the, the end of it cool down a little bit because that way you can completely just know when to punish him at certain scenarios when he does go for it. For example, he's fully charged. He might land here. Punish it with a strong attack. A lot of them like to spam the same rotation of moves on rank, by the way. Also, another key thing about Banana Guard is just staying completely away from the character. There's some times where he will even hit you just because you in the air. And if you at a certain percent, you gonna go flying, bruh. A big thing about Banana Guard is I like to stay above them a lot because they don't really know how to combo you outside of forward air. Once you play around a just general game plan and you see how the Banana Guard plays, you can counter them really easy in a lot of scenarios. It's easier said than done, of course, but that's my suggestion. Not to possess at the ledge, do not rush to get back up here. Banana Guard will do whatever he can to make sure you have a bad time near the ledge of the stage. Cause you could literally instantly die a lot. I've seen so many people die from just getting hit by his side special at ledge or off stage. It is crazy. Also, if he air dodges behind you, be careful. He will try to use side special to hurt you really badly. See how you, see how I just parried that with Banana Guard? You can parry that move really easy if you know the timing for it. But you got to be ready for it. A lot of times, Banana Guards will definitely do it a lot in the air. So if you see them coming at you with the move, I just jump up and get away. <laughs> Black Island is very annoying. You see that bubble right there? Literally, do not throw projectiles into the bubble. That's common sense. Punish him out of the bubble, though, if he does a round start, is dash attack. You knock him completely out of it really quick and easy. And you go crazy with Black Adam on here just to knock him out of his bubble. So that way, you'll be able to go for projectiles and different follow-ups now. Um, another thing about Black Adam, this move, avoid this at all costs. Don't try to jump over it. Don't try to contest it. Oh, this kick right here is best to air dodge up from it. So you don't get combo back because <laughs> sometimes people be getting hit by the double stage. also another tip a big tip for fighting black adam don't try to approach him in the air a lot especially at high percents because if you get this jab off you die if black adam is also above you he's gonna try to go for these double lightning bolts to hit you and what it does it gives him a chance to go for a certain pop-up be careful of this if you're not on point you could get combo to death like I just did right there. Another high committal move from Black Adam is his down smash. He can't air dodge or act from it instantly once he goes from it. He still has to hold that. And even then, you can punish Black Adam with like a forward aerial or some advancing move in the air that will hit him. All right, I've learned in this version of Multiverse is my last tip. And this is my personal how I deal with Black Adam. So I could be wrong. When he's flying, don't even approach buddy, bruh. You're going to be more pissed off trying to get him all the time. And he's just going to hit you with something. And you're going to get cooked. You're going to be pissed off. Also, when you see him dash, you got to hit him instantly. A lot of times, I just jab here. If you play Smash Bros, think of this as like Pikachu's, uh, what is it, Quick Attack. Or even like Fox and Falco's little dash, the side special. It works pretty much similar like that, but the hitbox happens afterwards. See how the Black Adam CPU is even punish me when I do side special every time? You gotta make sure you hit a multi-hit move or something big just to completely stop them all together. You get out of a lot of situations dealing with this move. If I did this at the ledge, I'm off the thing and I can fly away now. So they could just be setting you up for failure all together. <laughs> all right, Bugs Bunny has a secret. A lot of y'all don't know, right? Everybody hates this goddamn bat. We all hate the bat, okay? That you didn't know is that if you get be hit behind them with the bat, it does less damage all across the board. The back hit does five damage. If I hit you in the front, it does almost up to nine to 10 damage. It's hard to avoid this move completely in this game, especially how like disjointed it is and it goes almost 360 above his head, 180 even. So be careful of that. However, a big thing to mitigate the damage from it is trying to put yourself in situations where you get the back hit of the bat 
from Bugs Bunny. See that five damage? That's essentially what you could do to mitigate you from even almost potentially dying or not him getting a sweet spot on his up air. Another thing about Bugs Bunny, he got this dive move. This move is really good in twos. In twos, he'll kick he get around, run away, do whatever he wants. He could go in the ground. A lot of the best ways to punish this move is parrying it. It's very easy to parry because it has a certain set amount of time. Yeah, it's about like a four to five second cooldown and he comes up the ground. And in some situations, if you're at a higher percent, you can get combo from it, so be careful. Parrying it is also a really good option if you know it's coming, especially in one-on-ones. Now we gotta talk about the save. The save is an annoying move because he can hit it at different speeds and it's a very all over the place type of move. <laughs> he can throw it down. He can hit it very slow at you. He can use the hammer, hit it very high at you. He could also use aerial attack to knock it up slow at you. He has over five to six different ways, multiple ways of launching that at you. I think the big thing to deal with the safe of Bugs Bunny is if you can stop the Bugs Bunny from hitting you, plan around the spot where he drops this. Don't play, don't stand under this, right? Like for example, this is the most Looney Tunes shit in this game for real. They could put this down at the ledge and then it come down and you'll die. Like you'll get spiked hard as fuck. Like it's like a cartoon. One big counter I deal with the wit is if I'm fighting a Bugs Bunny, my goal is once he throws it down, I'm trying to attack him just so he can move away from the positioning of the safe. That way he doesn't get the option to use that tool against me in gameplay. In this version of Multiverses, it's very rare to tell people to stand on the rocket. A lot of the times, it's harder to stand on it and deal with the rocket all together. I don't recommend it in this version of Multiverses since the game is a tad slower, especially in one-on-one. -on -one. And in 2v2s, it's just too chaotic that you bound to walk into it if you're not focused on it. Completely avoid his aerial missile all together. Now we're on Finn. Everybody hates one move about Finn. It's the side special. Now, the truth about the side special is number one, you don't throw stuff at the side special, no projectiles. Another thing about Finn's side special is being above him throws off the trajectory of him hitting the target. You see, the longer you hold it, you have to be very close above him to even get that. And sometimes it puts you in a situation to where the player can attack you from behind. Yes, you can parry that attack from Finn. <laughs> you can parry it. If you haven't played Finn this time around, you know straight up like his gimmick is getting those coins. Right, your goal is to stop Finn from getting the coins because when he gets to over a thousand coins, he does get the, the, the option to get BMO, which is a very horizontal counter. You give Finn the chance to get BMO, he gets countered horizontally into a big combo. This could hurt, and it'd be GG no re like that, baby. <laughs> Also, don't get mixed by a backpack. A good way to dodge backpack now, because it's not as crazy, is just air dodging uh, left and right away from the move. All right, so I'm gonna teach you about Garnet. The big thing about her, a lot of her moves are very reactionary, meaning your mistakes, she can capitalize off of them really well. Honestly, Garnet is one of those characters that if you find a good Garnet, you either A, not gonna know what to do, or you're gonna be mad annoyed. Also, this right here can be avoided completely. Just completely jump over this. A lot of y'all don't. I've been watching some new people play the game, and y'all do not jump over this move. This move is bad simply because I get a full combo into up smash from it. Even a small version can do wonders. You see that line move she just did? You have to completely stay away from Garnet when that is active. She will catch you, don't jump in the line of it or nothing. Essentially, if you play keep away against Garnet, you will be able to cook a lot. <laughs> stay away from the line. And now she has to come to you. Now some of her kit is very useless right there because she just used up our resources. All right, Gizmo is a really annoying character because he has a lot of good tools for every situation in this game. He's a small character, so a good thing to do with Gizmo is try to just avoid getting hit with his follow-ups. That's something a lot of people don't know about, right? This option right here is really strong as well. People would do it similar to like Banana Guard in the air. Same thing here with this umbrella. <laughs> with instead of it's an umbrella instead of a, a, a spear. Another thing with Gizmo is playing around the popcorn. Please play around the popcorn. <laughs> you go get hit, that shit go do some damage. A lot of good things sometimes with a, a spot dodge. 
See how I parried that right there? Pretty easy. That's probably one of the easiest moves, in my honest opinion, to parry in multiverses right there. This car, bro. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Pray. That the car is so annoying. They gonna they gonna get in the car. They gonna drive around. They gonna do what they need to do. Sometimes I don't even attack the car. I just let them do what they gonna do and drive around, and then go for an aerial that puts me above them. That lets me punish them like a forward aerial or something big to combo off of it. I don't know. I haven't thought that far yet. Some good tools to punish Gizmo's car is characters that have a lot of forward advancing uh, forward aerial special moves like Joker's uh, cane or even Gizmo's umbrella, banana guard spear to knock him out of the car. A lot of times you're either gonna trade or completely win that interaction completely. All right, another cool one is Harley Quinn. Now, number one, when you see the slide, you gotta punish that, man. She gonna just come, she gonna hit you completely. Yeah, so Harley Quinn's down special right here is really crazy because she can dash into it and almost combo into something from it. Harley can go and slide into up smash, into mallet. Sometimes she can even go into slide into up special, putting you in the air, giving her a chance to just completely destroy you vertically. Um, Another thing is with her, Another thing people get cooked by is these aerials. Number one tip with Harley is playing away from those balloons. Those balloons will get you cooked. Try to fight her or keep her away from them because she will, if she hits you with them shits, she comboing you, you might be dead. Also, you don't want to be above Harley. You want to completely just avoid her 100%. Like, don't be above her. She has up air, she has mallet. She has so many different options to hit you out of. Being above her is probably one of the worst things you can do. She also has the, the party popper that can combo into whatever. Please try to get away from being above her as much as possible. You see the bomb? You can bait out the bomb by jumping into her and jumping away. A lot of Harleys like to throw it as soon as you jump near them. See how I jumped into the bomb just to stop her right there? That's a key strategy that I usually do. Some Harleys, if they're smart, they might hold on on it and dash dance back and forth then throw the bomb. But they want that bomb off as fast as possible so they can pop you up in the air and get a big combo off of you. That's their true goal with that. Also, if you catch a Harley putting a bomb at ledge, the best way is to air dodge through it so you can just get the hit of it and it just completely messes up the trajectory of whatever they are trying to hit you with sometimes. They go for those options a lot. Oh, another thing is if you're trying to attack Harley in air with some areas and try to drag down, be careful if there's a bomb nearby because sometimes you can literally just get the, the attack off and completely just get hit into the bomb too. Now you're in a juggle scenario. All right, Iron Giant's one of those characters, literally a big tip around him. Just literally taking your turn back, having some patience. I think they nerfed Iron Giant as of today or last night of the patch. But completely just stay around Iron Giant, man. Please do that. I mean, fighting Iron Giant in one on one is pretty easy. He's a big moving hitbox, but again, take your time with it and watch out completely. Do not let Iron Giant get the tackle off. He can go into forward aerial almost twice on another Iron Giant, or even more depending on if, how you plan the character. Also, you probably got hit by this before. This is not real. Y'all can air dodge out of this. Okay, this is not real. Tell y'all this right now. This is not real. Don't get cooked by this. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't get cooked by that. Next on the list is Jake. Now, the big thing about Jake right now is um, he's not as strong as he was in the open beta version of Multiverses, in my opinion. He's easy to dodge, deal with all across the board. But a big thing about Jake is you don't want to be above him. The more you above him, the chance that he gets to hit you with some things. And yeah, him eating you up is a very big thing that you can pun get punished off of. If you see him go for that and you get a successful dodge, you can punish him very big here. To me personally, it's kind of easy to see where he's punching, especially if they're charging up. So you can completely punish off the trajectory of the move. Also, when he throws you out, unless you're near the edge, I highly recommend you just completely backing off if he throws you out because that way you can just reapproach the situation and not let him get anything off on you. Again, why I say stay above him? You can look, you was not winning that interaction with him above you, bro. I'm just telling you that right now. <laughs> see how he's eating me right now? I'm just gonna drift out or mash completely out just to get out of. Oh, uh, if you see, 
if you see a Jake Gold horse a lot, a lot of the times you could punish it by just staying above them that time, jumping and going for a down smash, down aerial. You'll do really good wonders there, you'll, you'll notice. <laughs> see how I jumped over it? He can turn it too, so just double jump. See how I mashed out to get out the ledge. At the ledge, they'll try to throw you off just to get you on some weird ass setup so you can die. And, and twos, be careful. Cause drifting off like that, you can die from Jake eating you like that. Also, pay attention to the line he's throwing you. It can tell you what it SDI or DI out of it, so you so you you survive longer. Okay, know where you coming out after he throws you up. All right, number one, Jason's the big body, the new boy on the block. Now, I say too fast to block is a good perk to use against Jason, simply because it destroys his armor. The more of you could get it off. Um, I love that a lot about fighting Jason. They all like to go for armor, especially good ones that know what's going on. And you probably be in one-on-one -on -one matches a lot of time. Like, damn, why can I never kill Jason? He had like 130 plus sometimes. You probably struggle killing him for some reason, right? I highly recommend for people that struggle fighting Jason, a bit counter to him, is applying that weakened with the press the advantage perk. If he had 125% of damage or more, it applies weakened to Jason instantly which is a really good tool to just be able to like help stack the odds against you in the matchup, especially if a character that doesn't do a lot of much damage or doesn't have that much knockback at the moment. It can help change the tide of battles really well with you with Jason. The best thing about Jason is a lot of people get hit by the teleport hitbox. Don't, don't become a victim of this, okay? Don't approach Jason when he's teleporting. And if you know the distance of where he's teleporting, you can literally punish him when he gets out of it. Cause either A, he's gonna have to burn a dodge to probably get out of whatever from afterwards. See how I punished it right there? Just with a basic, just dump down aerial. Also, you can literally just air dodge a sleeping bag. Don't be scared of that. He's also very vulnerable after it. If you wanna dodge a lot of Jason moves on the swing, don't go in like horizontally down. I would tell y'all numpad notation, but I don't know if y'all know what that is, but that is one way I dodge it. Just air dodging diagonal down and away from Jason like that. LeBron has basketballs. So any perk that lets you parry the projectiles is also really good for him just to stop him off together. I know a lot of people get salty fighting LeBron. Like I'm not really fighting LeBron. I'm fighting the basketball. Well, there are perks to help you deal with that. Honestly, a good counter to LeBron in a lot of scenarios is fighting him when he doesn't have the basketball. A lot of times, some LeBrons will throw the basketball round start and they become very useless in a lot of scenarios. <laughs> he does have a good move to deal with some stuff, but another thing about LeBron, I highly suggest on stages with like platforms and stuff like that, being very careful where you move. The way, the way you move against LeBron could be the tiding factor for you winning or losing the game a lot of the times. Another thing about LeBron is people literally just don't know how to throw the ball like that. They just gonna throw it and bam, and then get hit, hit by it. Also, you can punish LeBron's dash attack. He probably has one of the easiest one to punish, in my opinion. Literally with just a jump aerial or anything out of it, to be honest with you. A lot of LeBrons like to jump and throw the ball at you. Another good way to deal with that is just jumping and air dodging towards him. Or if you know where the ball trajectory is gonna be. Cause a lot of times he's gonna throw the ball and then not really act out of it or try to hit you with anything from it. So if you just completely just air dodge towards them while the ball is coming out, depending on the trajectory and when you can, you will literally cook LeBron a lot of the times, way more than you think you would. All right, now I'll be honest with everybody. I struggle with this character. <laughs> and the only reason I struggle with this character is simply because he was one of the end of the open beta versions of multiverses and not too many people was playing them when the open version was out. So here, I'm gonna show you how I deal with Marvin the best way possible. Now, Marvin has a lot of disjointed hitboxes, right? He has this balloon that he could just shoot at you. And if he shoots a projectile at you, honestly, I highly recommend you not shooting projectiles at Marvin. For example, Marvin does not have a cooldown on the special move right here. And if it catches your projectile, he can knock it back and slowly goes right back at you and hit. There's literally no cooldown here with Marvin doing this. Now, if Marvin has the Space Invader perk where he can aim his up attack, his up air at you, then he's kind of problematic. It's probably one of his best perks, to be honest with you. Again, a good thing for fighting Marvin is making sure you just not in the air above him. A lot of scenarios. A big thing about Marvin, another thing about Marvin is his down attack. His down attack puts him in stun or his armor break move. You see how he's stunned? 
If you can completely avoid this move, punish him with a down air could do so much wonders for you because then you can combo him off a lot of things with multiple characters. Good character is Pogo Stick and to up bat with Joker. Batman has an optimal punish with it. I could keep going so on and so on with the characters. This move has stun on it as well. Even the aerial version has its own stun, but he can combo from it. This is the ledge. I highly recommend you just baiting this shit out and legitimately just not trying to contest it at all. I've died so many times from this move. The hitbox on this shit is wonky. Please take your time. All right, Morty is a little complicated. And let me explain why. Morty has a lot of options out of everything in this game. So being aware of what he goes into is a thing that you have to just be ready for when fighting Morty. Watch out for Morty's dirt. Sometimes, depending on the percentage of the player, it pulls them closer. The higher the percents, the closer it pulls you towards the player that's using Morty. He can combo into up air. And a lot of times, depending on which way you, if you're not ready for Dion that, you can die. And 90%, you're pretty much almost cooked depending on the stage's blast zone. If you see Morty go for this, this stays out for five seconds. It can also hit two times before Morty has to put it away. Let's talk about Morty's blaster. Now the big thing about Morty's blaster is you have to be ready to know when he has it at all times. A big problem about Morty's blaster that you may have a problem with is that a lot of times it can be thrown out random and it's not always visible on screen if the player has it or not. And even if Morty's not near you trying to hit you with it, it goes a set distance like mid screen to punish you all together. A good counter to stop Morty from approaching you or even being a kill option to kill you with blaster is being aware that at late percents or even towards the stage, he's probably gonna try to shoot blaster at one point at you. Oh, another thing about Morty, this is probably one of the easiest moves to punish, but be careful because when you do the rewind time gimmick, it, it drops a nade. This move is hilarious. A lot of the times, if you see a Morty do this off the stage, their up special, you can literally just go for a down air. And if they're at high percent, they probably gonna bounce up or bounce back into it. And then you can just combo and kill them. Morty jab is, in my honest opinion, one of the best in twos. Overall has a very good lockdown on it <laughs> across the board. The good thing to know about the hammer Morty perk is when he's in his animation, he has to be locked to it. You can't air dodge until after the animation. Another thing about Morty with the hammer perk on is he that he's not gonna kill with it on like the other jabs do in the game. Another thing you wanna look out for when you're fighting Morty is his size special, which is the teleport through time or the door, I guess. <laughs> this move only lasts about four seconds and it's easy to just check out the trajectory of the move. Another thing is Morty can air dodge after he finished the teleport regardless, so it doesn't matter. He can air dodge in space, so be careful before punishing. Don't just instantly hit him right afterwards because he could probably pair you and be a big punish on yourself from that. All right, Rain Dog, I call him Akuma. To be honest with you, Rain Dog don't exist in this version of multiverses a lot of time. When you see them, You'll probably see them here and there because they probably really just like the character. But again, why I call him Akuma is because his air fireball combos into things all the time. Be careful of getting hit with that from above. See all the different options I'm using here to combo into you? It can be very bad. And if you stay still for too long, you will be putting this fire over time. A good way to fight Rain Dog overall, everybody, is playing a lot more aggressive on the character. Literally rushing them down. Don't let them get any options off. Playing the game really smart and strong. Uh, another key tip to fighting Rain Dog is understand the difference between his projectiles. So for example, from full screen, this one has a higher chance of hitting Rain Dog always because it kind of has this tracking on it. For some reason, wherever you throw it. Another thing about it is the special version, it will bounce above the opponents. You could get hit even if you air dodge away from it. While the Kuma Fireball only goes in one directory and it goes down. All right, so I make this running joke about Rick in this game. And right now, he kind of like Fox and Falco in my brain. Like his moveset, it just clicks to me. I feel like I've been playing them forever. I don't know. That's how I feel. All right, leave me alone. Literally, Rick, they fixed a lot of his hitboxes now. This move works. In the old version of Multiverses, this move would sometimes either drop or be so inconsistent. And that could be a huge kill move right there you have to respect that he has this move and do not if he's grounded try to jump above rick as he's going for this up smash now you see his teleport right 
This is how far his teleport could go. What you probably didn't know about Rick's teleport is that if he's completely on the other side of the screen and then tries to go to the other side, the game doesn't let him do that. I'll show you. It just completely just breaks. It just stops. <laughs> what I notice a lot of Rick players try to do is when they had low percents, they're going to try to teleport to the most absinthe place in the game. Now for Rick's down special, the best way is to literally just run away from this and just get away from him completely. In the air, it's easier to punish Rick because you could just chase him down and hit him simply because this move, he can only air dodge afterwards and not cancel it. But I highly recommend when this move is active, he's trying to get either you to be turned into that, the mini rain dog, or get the buff on him. So the best thing is to knock him away, be aggressive, and push him off from the positioning of his down special. Rick's dash attack is also pretty good. Just a low profile, some options as well. It's so crazy how he gets so low on the startup of it. And he can sometimes just completely avoid a lot of scenarios. Also, if you're at high percent against Rick, it is always smart to always be very defensive and getting away from him because you can get hit with this forward air and the knockback on this shit is crazy. Always keep out away from Rick when he goes for that. And a lot of prep, per, uh, a lot of projectiles and multiverses literally stop me six from coming out. Best way to deal with me six is literally approaching them and making sure you see what me six does first before you come at them. Cause a lot of people like to jump when you see me six and then you get hit up like that or you get hit up from above and you're like, what the fuck going on? Don't, don't do that. You're going to get hurt. So the best thing is to do is to react to me six, not when he comes out, react to what he does. If he's just standing there and then wait to do an action afterward. And here's the famous character that everybody is tired of, fucking Shaggy. Shaggy is one of those characters where I'm just gonna straight up tell y'all, don't get hit. <laughs> if you get hit, you can put all that work in and instantly die from fighting Shaggy really quick and easy. To me, he's the Captain Falcon of the game. Now in twos, you see Shaggy charging up there. The best thing to do is just not even approach Shaggy. Let him go charge, and that way you can focus on your teammate in 2v2s. Make his charge feel worthless. Punish him for charging. Do as much damage as you can on the other teammate while he's charging just to get him off and then completely play around him. Yeah, you can parry Shaggy's move and kill just like off of that. The big thing about Shaggy's side special is that it's always a set distance. You can parry it a lot. Remember, Shaggy always has a set distance on his kick, by the way, so don't be scared to try to go for parry. Practice that out a lot. That'll do so much wonders in gameplay. See how I parry that? And he's dead. <laughs> Practice that a lot. Another thing about Shaggy is when you above him, you got to air dodge all the way out. Try not to be directly above him because he has multiple ways to juggle you and hit you from combos. The better way is figuring out how to dodge him completely because you can completely get out of any situation where he could go for his up special and kill you or probably an up air or something else to just combo you till you die. So when you get hit, the closer you are to the ground, the better. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to say. If you're above Shaggy, you feel like, damn, I'm about to die. The best thing is to find a way to completely wait and bait out his up punch. This move will come out a lot and he'll go for it every chance he gets. All right, Steven is one of the most annoying characters in multiverses right now. Literally, he hitting you. You're getting, you probably got hit with that down there multiple times, huh? You probably got hit with that shit. Uh. Honestly, if you can, go ahead and knock the watermelon out of the way. Literally, it's just annoyance. He's just gonna annoy the hell out of you anyway. Reason why is like the watermelon's really not a threat, but if you do let it go, if you leave it alone for too long, you might get hit by some shit and be pissed off that you got hit by it and just might mess up a kill confirm for you. Another thing about Steven, a lot of characters can pro low profile the shield. If you didn't know, Steven can dash attack through his own shield for some reason. Another thing, if Steven's above you, they're gonna all try to go for the up air to kill you. It has crazy knockback. One, one or two hits at a high percent could be the death of you, bruh. Literally, you gotta learn how to avoid that. Honestly, I recommend you not mashing your air dodge on the down air, because a lot of people like to mash it there and then get comboed into the up spike. That's not a good thing. I'd rather you just save your dodge until he goes for the clap. And then Steven's neutral attack is very menacing because people are getting chased down with this move all the time. Best way to deal with it is either A, completely just running around it, avoiding it. But if you see them charging it and you have a way to hit them like with a forward aerial or something like that, 
sometimes I would rather force the trade or completely just get out the way from the move altogether. So Steven's special attack, he throws out a line where it goes anywhere, any part of the screen. And if you get hit, it pops them up and gives Steven a chance to go for it. The other special, mind you, it has a pretty decent cooldown so it can't be spammed. So essentially playing outside of Steven, wherever Steven is, do not let him get above you or on the other side. Hit him with an up aerial, an up attack. Some characters have good moves all around. Like Joker's my favorite person to fight Steven with because he can't get around the whole 360 uh crane or core bar or whatever all right next we on stripe i call stripe the happy chaos you see that reticle you probably know at this point that shit is annoying it's whenever he hits you he does get that reticle off on you but you gotta be make sure look at the icon in the top left corner it tells you how many bullets he has personally attacking him when he has less bullets is better because if you make a mistake he can't kill you from the top with the bullets also be careful if you see this radio this radio right here that's a good pop-up option it's it advances him away from you and gives him room to just set up for something else i know with me with stripe i usually go that into cart <laughs> and that's only at the percent if i know they're gonna air dodge back to the ground because they're anxious you see how you get hit with three shots and die uh-uh y'all gotta air dodge away from that <laughs> if anything it's best to air dodge the first hit of the gunshot i believe i might be wrong or the second one depending on how many he does have all right superman is one of those characters that you have to play very patient against never forget superman will cook you if you don't know how his moves work a lot of things with superman best tip is if you see armor respect it or if you have an armor move yourself you can crank right through super most of superman's moves as well you can you could probably parry that yeah you can parry that move really well as well and kill him really easy honestly that might be one of the easiest moves to parry that move you gotta completely avoid air dodge through superman there to completely avoid that move see and you can't even contest it with another superman grab either this move right here i highly recommend never approaching superman when you see this animation just just get away move around don't even deal with it any perks that break armor with superman is good to fight against them with highly recommend putting on armor break he's the one character that I will, for right now that i always tell people put on that armor shit bro because i ain't trying to deal with it a lot of supermans like this move because it, it gives them a combo option and a good combo tool superman can also throw you back as well i didn't know you could do that you could also throw people back with Superman as well. Oh, laser, especially in 2v2. Laser is a very big thing that's kind of weird now. But if you want to really punish Superman, wherever he is from laser, like once he does laser, he can't air dodge after it. So if you know where the laser is and he's doing it, you could just jump up and hit him with an up aerial. Most characters like Morty's really good at punishing him in my honest opinion. So that's Superman. All right. The best way to fight Taz, I'm going to be real with you, do not let him play. If you got projectiles, you literally stop him off 100%. You cannot contest this tornado once it's active. The best way to beat out Taz, literally, is characters like projectile. I think one of his worst matchups would probably be Batman. Characters with a lot of projectiles and stuff like that. It's really crazy all across the board, in my opinion. All right, so you see, if you're a chicken as Taz, that is not the smartest thing to do right a lot of people are trying to fight taz when they're like 16 out of 18 before they get turned into a chicken stop doing that just completely de-approach get away and run away from taz that way if you are a chicken you could just have to wait till the cooldown goes away and then you can cook again all right now here's the thing this man taz turns into a chicken for 10 seconds all you gotta do is run away for 10 seconds don't let him cook you in this situation to completely avoid that though is when you at a high count with the salt it's best for you to just like play passive and don't approach like that characters with long range normals if he does get it close go for those options if anything because that way you keeping yourself safe and not being vulnerable being in a chicken state now this move is very scary in twos especially when it's a chaotic environment but the best tip is to coordinate with your teammate or your friend and tell them hey yo we need to get out the way because this move's not the fastest move he does have also be aware he can hold this move for a long period of time and still do the same amount of damage from beginning to end if it hit joker a character that everybody generally is pissed off about fighting and gets annoyed by he has his whole move set is annoying 
I can sit here and go over his whole moveset and anti-meta all day, but I don't feel like doing that. So if you got this far in this video, please make sure y'all hit the like button, okay? This is a long video to do, especially going over some specific things like this and not having the best training mode. Again, make sure you hit the like button. Joker, as a character, has a lot of good tools where people like to air dodge in from his cane. You, I seen, I'ma tell you, if you fault me on quick play right now, even on 2v2, you get up air, and for some reason, y'all air dodging towards me. Why y'all air dodging towards me for me to just go hit this again? Honestly, the best tip to fighting Joker is just don't be above him at all. Being above him is a death sentence. Another tip is, for example, you know that Joker has only really one good air option. That one's okay because it plays flammable on you and whatever, ignites, okay? This is really not that reliable a lot of times because sometimes it will miss and you'll be looking stupid. Like, it's not that crazy of a hitbox. And you got to know how to combo with it. Personally, I don't even like using this move unless I'm at low percent. Sometimes I only like doing it because I just felt, I, I felt like it, all right? But another thing is Joker's side special in the air. This move is very crazy. Things you need to know about this move. Number one, Joker can control it going up. Joker can control it in the air going down. You could probably air dodge the move and punish it and parry it. Oh, another thing about Joker is y'all need to know what all cards do at all times. Learn those card patterns. First card is heart. The heart card, literally, the heart part five, literally explodes on hit. This is probably one of the easiest ones to dodge, but it is a bigger projectile, so be careful forward. That's the spade. I think it's a spade. I'm sorry, I'm black. I don't be knowing my cars sometimes. I ain't grow up playing them 24-7. I didn't like cars growing up. All right. Regardless, the spade one will go back and come back and chase you back down. That is the scariest projectile. Honestly, avoiding that one in the rotation is probably for the best because you could get pulled in into an up special. You don't want that. Then there's the diamond. You get three diamonds. It's a multi-hitting projectile that staggers them a little bit. If you capitalize off it, you can combo from it. Okay, listen, Tom and Jerry, I suck at Tom and Jerry. This is the one character on the roster I can't really play, but I know how to get around them now. All right, and I'm gonna tell you some big things that I didn't know till I talked to Leviathan. Hear me out. Now, Tom and Jerry is a character that it's a lot of fake shit going on, right? Also, just don't even try to approach the traps. They stay there, they're stationary. Don't try to approach them like that. Unless you're going completely over it, don't don't get cooked like that i've seen twitter clips of people just looking at it they walk into it and die no don't don't do that this is a landmine it's a grenade in reality <laughs> all right so i was believed when multiverses came out the fishing rod was the worst thing ever because i hated fighting it fishing rod is fake all right you probably don't believe in fishing rod but this fishing rod is fake all right so my big thing was that i tried to always jump over this move no you can walk past it and literally punish him. Dash attack is a good option to punish Jerry's um, fishing rod because if you're above it, it hits you and you get popped up. The line itself, the yellow part, is where you get hit at. My brain thought it was something different. I thought it was like a trap and I, I didn't think about it until I talked to Leviathan. So staying grounded when this move is active will always help you out so much more than anything else a lot of the times in situations. Also, most time and Jerry's don't really go for it up close because it just doesn't work up close. Like you see this here, don't get cooked by that. Essentially, if you notice the Tom and Jerry is not walking forward, you can DI out of that and probably punish. I've seen people just now in multiverses, people just hit a button and just walk out of it like nothing's happened. But that's if they know to walk forward with the move as well, which is very creative on PFG's part. Velma, they recently buffed Velma, which stay tuned for a video on Velma because I think she's pretty fun to play now compared to how I was feeling week one. But Velma, Number one, she doesn't have the megaphone, so it's easy to know if she's doing this. Just completely jump above the megaphone. You could probably punish her with an aerial um, or even a projectile even. It doesn't even go full screen anymore. You have to be in a pretty good distance. Most Velmas, the couple I've played, like to do megaphone nor the ledge. So sometimes I just wait out at the wall while I'm sliding and then just get back on after she does the megaphone. Or if you're really gutsy, you air dodge up from it. Wonder Woman is one of those characters that you have to watch out for. A lot of the times, you have to be very swift and number to fight her all across the board. 
Overextending could be death of you. You gotta watch out for certain moves and punish accordingly when you see a Wonder Woman go for certain things. I'm probably gonna be a Wonder Woman, man. I'm not, even if they nerf her, I'm probably gonna be Wonder Woman, Batman, Morty, and Velma. I don't know. Right now, I'm, I'm still hurt by Bel Velma's megaphone, but it's cool. Number one, I would tell, okay, number one, do not try to be above Wonder Woman a lot. This up air is crazy. Depending on where you get hit from it, it'll spike you down or knock you up. So be careful if you know the difference of where you are if you're gonna try to air dodge through one of her moves in the air. Like right there, that one literally cooked her ass and then knocked her to the floor and gave me a chance to combo. Now, shield bash is one of those things where like people get so tilted by it, but the best way to deal with that move, honestly, is literally just knowing you can parry that move. I also think Wonder Woman has one of the easiest parable dash attacks in the game. Maybe that's just me. Be careful of shield bash at the ledge. That's a good thing that they'll go for, especially if you're just trying to hurry up and get up. That's an option. She has so many option selects at the ledge. It's crazy from dash attack to shield bash. A big thing about shield bash is it's always a set distance. So get used to practicing that and parrying that. A lot of situations, it is a burst option, so it's, it's easier said than done. But some people like to use it just straight in their face. And you always know the distance of shield bass. And that never changes. Also, when you see Wonder Woman go for this move, the neutral air attack, be careful. Because a lot of the times they cancel into forward smash. And that can be very bad for you even early stock. Another thing about Wonder Woman is you wanna run out her armor. That's a good thing about Wonder Woman. Uh, her armor doesn't stay as crazy as it used to be, but be careful. All right, that being said, if anything in this video helped you out, make sure you consider subscribing to the channel. This video is hard as hell to do because the training mode is not that good. I, I feel bad because I wish it was a better training mode, but I did my best with what we can. And I just want to help out a lot of people that kept asking questions about characters on my Twitch or in the YouTube comment section down below. This is primarily for newer players or returning players that may have just forgot something. Use this video as a quick cheat sheet. Share it to the Multiverses community, whoever you want to do it with. Thank y'all for supporting me. We're Avatar Yaya. You guys are golden and that is raw. Squala, peace, and I'm out.